Hi everyone, and here we are with another video. This time it's on the various media management features of Family Historian 7, which have further improved in the last two updates. Those who know me know I can be a little hard to please, but the developers at Family Historian have really knocked the ball out of the park with these updates. Yes, there are a few little tweaks that would be welcome and a little bit of detailing, but I'm confident that those will get dealt with in due course. This video is running pretty close to 30 minutes in total runtime. By all means, watch it through once, but if there's any sections that you need to jump in and out of, all the chapters are in place. Use the little scrubber at the bottom of your YouTube video that you can see on screen here. Run back and forward and jump in wherever you want. If you want to get notification of future video releases, hit the subscribe button down below, followed by the bell. Let's jump into the presentation. If you come from my generation, you will likely have loads of paper records in some kind of storage system, and they are not linked to your computer genealogy. The more modern generation will have loads of files derived from online repositories with meaningless file names and no properties. Those old paper records and box files need to be converted to digital wherever possible. So our first task is to do that. The most simplest and static way with your own collection is to run them through a scanner. If you're visiting a relative with a large photo collection, they normally don't object to you taking photographic copies for your own benefit. Asking to borrow precious photographs is just inappropriate. The first thing I want to do here is I want to change the properties of this image. So right click, choose properties. I want to give it a meaningful title. In the comments, I want to add the comments that were on the back of the photograph. And I'm adding a unique word to the end of that. I also know the picture was taken in 1943. So I add 1943 to the date field. Now I can't add a year only. So I have to add 1st of January 1943. Lastly on the general tab. I want to give it a meaningful file name. So instead of family 001. I'm changing that to Patterson Agnes underscore 1943 Crumlin Road Belfast. If we search now for Vigor FH video, here's our file. And that's being picked up by the properties that we put on the file itself in the comments box. So far, you've not been near a genealogy program, but let's go to Family Historian now. Let me resize this Explorer window. Here's my image. I drag it to the media list. I'm going to select link only. And there's our file. It has appeared at the top and there's our thumbnail to the right. Let me show you something very interesting. Remember the title that we put into the file properties, the date that we put into the file properties and the description. Family Historian has brought all of those into the file properties in your media list. I previously used Roots Magic and all of that information in the media gallery in Roots Magic has to be input manually. It doesn't come in from the file. Now, I can remember wishing for this in Roots Magic more than 10 years ago, but it just never came about. This is a group photo and I want to add a few frame links to this photo. This can't be done in Roots Magic. Again, it's been long wished for. Out of all of these people, I want to select two of them. One is Agnes Patterson, and the second one is her cousin. I simply drag a frame selection around the person concerned. Select individual in this case. Select them from the individual list, and that's one frame link added. Add another frame link. Select her cousin, Mary Cranford. Individual. Select Mary from the list, and that's the second frame link added. You can see the two frame links here. If I click this button to show all links, you can see the two frame links, one around Agnes Patterson and one around Mary Cranford. If I go to the focus window, you can see that the frame linked photograph is being used on Agnes Patterson's family view. If I double click on Agnes and select her media tab, you'll see the thumbnail here and it also gives her age. Family historian is calculating the age from the difference between the date of the photograph and date of birth. Going over to Mary Cranford, you can see the same thing here. You can also exclude these photographs from diagrams of focus window, reports and web pages, all publications are just none as the default. You can add a link note describing the link and the event. There's a checkbox here where you can use the link note as the caption and you see that appear here. 
If I go back to the Media Record tab and click on the file name, you'll see that Family Historian opens the record in my operating system viewer, which is much wished for by many researchers. Selecting the Media Link tool brings up another screen. Here I can see Agnes highlighted and all of her immediate family members. If this was a group photograph of a family event, this makes it easier to add frame links or simple links to the family members in that photograph. So why should we add media? Firstly, media brings your personal family research to life. Whether that's on the family page or in diagrams, your file will benefit greatly from the addition of media. From a documentary and evidence point of view, it places all of our evidence in one place for easy reference. We can check through obituaries, BMD certifications and grave markers all with ease. Eventually all researchers want to produce quality reports and for those reports to contain media. Those might be for family reunions or simply to email to another researcher. Notice that all these reports have continuous scroll by mouse wheel or drag in the scroll bar. This was part of Roots Magic 7 and dropped in Roots Magic 8 to the disappointment of many, including myself. Now you can only scroll within a page and you have to page down multiple times for very large reports. You might want to produce and manage your own website and again images add life to those productions for sharing with other family members around the world or interested researchers. In Family Historian you can even provide a download link to your file. Book Publish is another feature which is missing from Roots Magic 8 and that's a full year after its release. Books are another publication which benefit greatly from images. And a much missed and very popular item for many who are staying with Roots Magic 7. There are many other ways to add media to Family Historian. You can even drag from the internet using the web clipper. You can also copy and paste directly to the media albums. Here we are still with Agnes Patterson. I'm going to click on her media tab and I'm going to click add media and add from file. I select the media, click open and I leave it as don't copy link only. I open the media. You can see it's got a crazy title, which I'll fix later. I'm going to link it to the face, draw a box around the subject and click OK. And here's the item. I'm going to delete that again on link only. And now let me open the web browser within Family Historian. The web browser opens by default on the notice board where you can read all about the latest updates in Family Historian. I'm going to search for Gracie Family History and here's my search results. I'm going to choose this one. Have a look down through it for some images. Well, here's an interesting image. And go to Agnes's Media. I'm just going to drag that over. You can see the blue highlight box. I just drop it. I've got the choice of renaming it here. I'll give it something more meaningful. This is just a test. And click Add. And there's the media. I can add more details to that media now in the gallery. And save it. I'm going to go over to Facebook. And one of my groups that I'm a member of. I look down through. Here's some images here that let me pretend are of interest to me. I drag this over and there it is. I just click Add and there's another image into my gallery. We'll do this one just for good measure and there's a third one in. Now I want to try and show you a difficulty you can hit on. Let me see if I can do it here. I try and drag this image over, get the blue box, but then we get the unrecognized image type. If I click on it to open it, now I can drag it over. I just need to give it a more meaningful name and click Add. Here's a different type of ad. So this is going to be a copy and paste ad. So the image that's in my header, I copy it. It's on the clipboard now. And I click Add Media and Paste Copied Image. That's the fifth image in our gallery now. So what about if the copy and paste doesn't appear? Let's, let's look at this image. I right click on it. So My Heritage. I try and drag it over. Nothing is happening. Hmm, maybe some sort of protection at play. I don't see any copy image down here. So what are we going to do? Here's a button to expand the image. Let me try that. Let me right click now. Ah, now I have the copy image. I can go over here, add image, paste copied image. Give it a name and that's another image in. That's six images collected in a pretty short time.
Now, apart from individuals and families, you can also paste images to places to improve your, your place. And if eventually, with Family Historian, I would hope to be improving my place details catalogue. So let's take this image of Belfast. I copy it, go to my places. Here's Belfast. Open it up, hit the media tab and add media. This is so obvious. I would like to see the paste on the right click rather than the sub menu. Give it a name and click add. And now my place Belfast has this lovely old picture, which I believe was 1899, round about the time they were building the city hall. So I'll give it a date here, 1899. I'm guessing that image was colorized in my heritage. So you can see that add media, there's a lot of options to add media, whether it's a static file, whether it's something from the internet. I find trawling through social media and collecting images very productive. And with the facilities in Family Historian, that's actually quite a quick process. So apart from some little intuitive tweaks, I have very little to complain about there. Eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed this photograph at the beginning of the presentation with the little diagrams on the back. Now that's not easy to represent in a file comments. The text is, but not the little diagrams. We want to highlight and see who the people are in this photograph and that just wasn't possible in Roots Magic. Here we are with the file properties. You can see in the file properties I've added detailed comments describing where people are. That's from the back of the photograph. I've added the title. I've added the year 1917. And I've added a tag here, Eva Ford. And I could add more tags if I wished. Again, the importance of this is the file can be searched on any of these criteria. And these are like the digital notes on the back of the photograph. And the file stands on its own merits. Close that down. And here's the file in Family Historian. You can see that all my comments have been brought in automatically without any further typing. The tag is here, Eva Ford, on the Links tab. If I want to see where those people are now, I just click the Show All Frames. And here's the three people in question. If I want to see each one individually, I just highlight each person. You can see the description from the notes on the back of the photograph that describe where those people are. And that stays both on the file, which is on my hard drive, and in Family Historian database. If I highlight Kate and go to her focus window, you can see her photograph here and that of her two daughters. If I look on a diagram, I can also see the photographs that have been used here. I know that was a bit of a repeat, but using image file properties to preserve notes from the back of photographs and frame linking to individuals within those photographs is a very valuable tool. If you've ever wondered how the press so quickly find a photograph when a news story breaks, then it's metadata within files, and more formally IPTC data. This is just a very basic version of that. So this is going to take quite a bit of managing, right? Well, thankfully that's what computers are good at, and the folks at Family Historian have put quite a bit of effort in. So I've quite added quite a few media items to my file, but I haven't added them in a very structured manner. So we're going to need to go through and explain how to do that. Documents and certificates should really be source or citation material. Photographs obviously should be personal details. Headstones and perhaps a marriage or graduation photograph, I would say should be fact-based detail because I would like them to print out in reports. The other thing I haven't really explained is where these items go on your hard drive. Using the method I've just previously done, they're all going to go into a media folder inside your Family Historian Project folder. That's not the way I keep things. I keep things in a separate folder structure, and I'll explain that in a second. You're going to want Family Historian or whatever choice your genealogy software is to become your digital media management system, a bit like your digital librarian who's going to look after all your files. And when you want to pull up a file, you go and see the librarian, they open the correct drawer, and there's the file. So all of my documents, images, certificates, church records, they're all filed and they're all attached to my file and I can easily review those as I go through research in the future. So here's my folder structure. I have copied these off to a portable hard drive and you can see here my passport. You've got genealogy and when I click that you get a single level folder structure. If you're on a Windows machine and you want to fully expand that, highlight the folder and hit the asterisk key on your keyboard. There'll be a bit of jumping about, and eventually you'll have every folder expanded. So now you can see the basis of my genealogy folder breakdown. Let me collapse a few of these. 
Here's one for Ancestry Images. The next one down is Church Records and all of the folders within that for different church records. You'll see these unlinked folders here. These are a throwback to when I used Roots Magic and I had to manage my unlinked media in, in funny ways. I do several surname studies. This one is my own surname. I go down and I'll find other ones. Here's Gracie. And you can see all the subfolders coming off that. There's audio files, baptism, births, census returns, deaths, immigration, etc. Here's another folder that I choose to split out separately, which is gravestones. And you can see all of the cemeteries listed down here that I've visited. And when you go to each one of them, you'll find all of the images that I've taken within those cemeteries contained there. That's the way I manage my media gallery. It may not be the way you want to manage yours. For my personal requirements, maintaining this separate media collection is important. Firstly, this collection is not just linked to Family Historian. It's also still linked to a RootsMagic database, which I use. It's also linked to Adobe Lightroom, which is an image editing program, and there's many free versions available. I use Adobe Lightroom to manage my meta tags. I make edits, etc., etc., and that will be reflected in Family Historian. It'll be reflected in Roots Magic. There's also other software linked to the media collection, but one important thing is that the media collection, this set of folders, is backed up to the cloud, so I don't have to worry about backups. This is all synced to the cloud. When you start a new project in Family History, and there's a little checkbox here that's checked. If you leave that checked, it's gonna take any of your media from anywhere on your computer that's been previously linked to another software, and it's going to pull them in and copy them to the Family Historian project folder. Now that leaves you with two files of, of each type. One big problem behind that is if you make an edit to one file, and you don't make an edit to the other file, which file is the most up to date, and it just leads you into the challenge of managing duplicates. I uncheck this box, and then all of my media remains in the folder structure, which I've carefully sort of set out, and Family Historian simply links to that media folder. So yes, Family Historian is going to become your digital media library, and there's going to be a bit of discipline put on yourself as regards how you name your media and how you manage it. There's more than one way to view media and family historian. I'm on the records view and I'm on the media tab. And I can set this screen up whatever way I like and it's independent of the other media list. I use family historian on a scaling setting of 80% as I want to cram as much information as possible onto the screen. I know that would be a challenge for some viewers. So firstly, I'm gonna set the scaling to 120% and apply a few custom settings. Go to tools. Preferences, click on Display, and here you can see I have it set to 80%, which is the minimum that you can do. On the drop down, you'll see it goes from 100 to 200. If you want 80 or 85, you're going to need to type that in manually. I'm going to go to 120. The other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the toolbar size to big. And lastly, I prefer to have this option turned on. Now, if you have a very small screen on a very small laptop, you may want to leave this turned off. This will add the diagrams buttons to the toolbar. Before we leave this screen, you can see my named lists to the right hand side, which would have been named groups in Rich Magic, my previous software. And you can see that all of the counts for those groups are here. So to go to the media list, click media, view all media. The next thing I want to do, I prefer this three row thumbnail. And I can, I can size that whatever way I want. I can go for all sort of thumbnails, or I can go for absolutely minimum thumbnails. Next thing I want to do is customize this, because a lot of this information that's on the columns lists, it's not important to me. So I go to configure columns. I'm going to take out the record ID. I'm going to take out the type. I'm going to take out the format and the year. I'm going to add one, which is embedded. I'm going to move Embed it up with the up-down buttons till it's just after the file name. I'm going to click OK. I added Embedded because Embedded basically means that it is within your Family Historian project folder. So this file is in the project folder and you can see that by the folder name on the right hand side. Once I've given these new names, I will be moving them out to my main folder structure. So let's try a few filters. Here's your filters. At the moment, we're on all media. I'm going to click individual media. I can immediately see that this is misplaced and I'll resolve that later. By the way, all of these little, this is a thumbnail of this picture. 
and you might wonder why I have that. This is a throwback to when I used Roots Magic, and for group photographs I had to get my digital scissors out and waste quite a bit of time preparing sort of individual photographs. I don't have to do that in Family Historian. Let's have a look at all family media. And this all looks good. These are all family shots. Next one down is Event Fact Media. I can see two places here. They might be wrongly linked. And I'll go and investigate that later. Next one down is Place Media itself. And we can see this is mostly all places and maps. Moving down again, Source Media. I don't generally add media to sources themselves. I add it more to the citation. But just for this example, I did this. This is the cover of the parish register that several citations actually come from. I would be more of a source lumper, although not extreme. And that's a whole subject on its own. If you want to Google lumper and splitter, there's a lot of reading there. So let's look at citation media. And that's all what I would expect in my citations. Next one down is source and citation, which just doubles up on all of that. And at the bottom, very useful, new unlinked media. I don't have any, but I will show you some in the course of this demonstration. Not forgetting the right hand side, click on find. And if you move down, you'll see all of the previous down here. But if you move down, you'll see the addition of broken file links. That's where you've changed maybe a name on a, on a hard drive and the file link is broken. So if I click on that again, I don't have any broken file links. The last thing to maybe mention here is search text. From my file naming, the file might have obit in it. The title might have obituary in it. I'm going to select all text fields and click OK. And you can see the results. There's either obit in the file name or obituary in the title of the file. Let me take all those uh, filters off again. The next line down, you can select audio, document, picture or video. All very useful filters and they can be combined as well. Managing a large media collection presents numerous challenges. I compiled this media feature comparison table to the best of my ability, covering the most popular software options available. The table is arranged left to right by count of media features and then alphabetically. You can see Family Historian now clicks all the boxes and you can make comparisons to your own software. The first challenge with media is automatic repair of media links, which have been broken by files being relocated on your computer. In Family Historian, click Tools, work with external files, and click the Auto Repair Links button. This will search far and wide on your computer and take a long time to complete depending on how much disk storage you have connected. I'm always one for improvements, and if anything, the ability to restrict this routine to particular drives and folders would be a welcome time saver. I don't have any broken file links, so let's rename a file and break that link. I'll just add Vager to the start of this file name. Allow me to introduce you to a little utility called Everything, which must rank as my favourite desktop app. You can tailor searches by file type, partial name parts and much, much more. The download page URL is on screen and I have to state I get no reward for recommendation. In fact, this little utility was recommended in today's issue of Computer Active. I'll enter Dibri. Oh, I didn't anticipate so many matches. Let me add Vager, and here is my file. I can rename it here, just right click, rename, and I'll strip the Vager off. Back to Family Historian, refresh the query, and no broken links. Just over to All Media, and here's the file and thumbnail job done. The next challenge is renaming those files to something meaningful, not like the Ancestry download file names, and as I stated earlier, never do this outside your genealogy software. Family Historian 7, Family Tree Maker 2017, and Legacy Family Tree all facilitate renaming of files in program. In Family Historian, I double click the file, zoom in to examine it, add a title, date, tag, and any other information, click Media, Rename File, and Job Done. Another significant challenge is discovering which media files on your computer are not yet linked to Family Historian. When you drag a file to Family Historian, the program now checks if it is a duplicate. So if you drag 30 files and 25 already exist, then you've added five new unlinked media. Let me demonstrate. This is a new family name to me, and not all of the media will be linked to this test project. I highlight the folder, 
type kind colon image into the window search, hit enter, and here are the 45 images in those folders. I highlight them all, drag the family historian and refresh the new unlinked query, and here's the balance of 10 files still to be linked. I double click the census return, select the media link tool, select the individual or family, and get it linked up. Checking down through my feature list again, I can see there's several items I didn't specifically cover, and I want to close that gap. The first one is easy, adding tags. Let me double click on this gravestone photo. If I click on the three dots at the end of the keywords field, you will see there are some keywords or tags starting to build up here. I enter gravestone, click add, and you will see gravestone is checked. And I click OK and OK again. I flick over to the media list and select custom. By default, everything is checked. I deselect everything but gravestone, click OK, and here's our image. If I go back to Agnes Patterson and media, these items are in her personal media album. And to adjust the display order, I simply highlight the media item and use the up down buttons. I will select the second image, which is a certificate, and promote it to first. Watch the thumbnails change order on screen. Displaying the existence of source and citation media is something Family Historian does, and my previous software, Roach Magic, does not, even in the most recent version. Unfortunately, this led me to add a lot of documentary media to facts and events when really those media items should have been linked to citations. And I did that simply so that I could see they existed. If I click on the facts tab for Agnes, I can now see two media indications, one for her birth fact and one for her marriage fact. This is basically the level of detail Roots Magic would have displayed. However, there is a media item attached to the baptism citation for Agnes. And how I see an indication of that is to click the cog wheel, show media, and select these two boxes. I have these selected permanently. I close that, and now you can see the media indication alongside the baptism fact. Displaying specific details can be seen over on the media list. I double click this passenger record, click the links tab, and I can see it's a passenger record for Robert Eggleton. If I double click on Robert and select facts, I can see the media is on the arrival fact, Options for fact and place media and reports is simply a report option. I print a narrative report for Agnes. I see her personal media and that of her partner. I click on options and then the pictures tab and select fact media. Now I get her birth certificate and her marriage photograph. If I choose to include places, I get any place media printed also. Before I move on, Family Historian is very rich in reporting options. And I want to show some of the language options. I select German and now I have a report in German. I can see the appeal. Last thing I need to close on is correcting media link tags. If I return to Agnes and click on the All tab, I can see this gravestone in her personal media section. If I right click on the media item and copy, then right click on the burial fact and paste, you can see the item has been linked. That was just a copy, so I need to highlight the duplicate item which is in our personal media and hit delete. That's that item relinked. That's it. Everything's covered, every box is ticked. I need to get back to some research because there's a relative on Facebook across the pond who's going through a phase of putting on loads of old family photographs. Incidentally, you can set your own landing page in the web browser within Family Historian. You just go to Tools, Preferences and Web Search window. Family Historian has an excellent support network of experts. I would strongly suggest heading over to the Family Historian user group, registering and searching out any topic of interest. Down below you can view new wish list items, but don't miss this little link which is the existing wish list. If you're registered, click on it and you can actually vote on the subjects that are of interest to you. There's also a link here to the Family Historian knowledge base, which is a wealth of information for anybody wishing to read. For some reason, my previous software decided to delete their wish list and not replace it. I'm not sure what that says for the determination of future development. I'll wrap it up there. If you got anything from the video, please give it a thumbs up to encourage me to do more. If you want to get notifications, click the subscribe button followed by the bell. And don't forget to check out these previous Family Historian videos. Thanks for watching.